All right, so are you ready to dive into these Pokemon cards? Let's go. You know, the ones that maybe you've got tucked away somewhere. Yeah. Thinking like, oh, those might be worth something now, right? Right. Well, get this. Some of them are selling for crazy amounts these days. Oh, yeah. Like down payment on a car. Crazy. Yeah. What's wild is that Pokemon cards have been around for over 25 years. Wow. And they've built this massive collector scene. Yeah. So today we're going to unpack why people collect them. What makes some of them worth a small fortune? Right. How you can even get started if you want to. Okay. And we're going to do it by breaking down this awesome article that really lays it all out for us. Perfect. Yeah. Because honestly, I'm feeling a bit nostalgic just thinking about those colorful cards. Oh, for sure. I bet you've got some memories tied to them too. Totally. That's a huge part of it, right? It's that nostalgia factor. Yeah. It's powerful. The Pokemon is this cultural icon. It is. And for a lot of people, these cards are like these little time capsules that bring back childhood memories. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it. The excitement of opening a new pack. Oh, yeah. The smell of that fresh cardboard. Totally. That thrill of pulling your favorite Pokemon. Oh, absolutely. It's like a direct line back to simpler times. For sure. But here's the thing. It's not just D nostalgia driving this whole collecting craze, right? Right. The article mentions people treating these cards like serious investments. Exactly. It's not yeah. just the nostalgia. There's this art appreciation angle, too. Okay. Because some of the artwork is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, these cards are mini masterpieces in their own right. Uh -huh. But yeah, the potential for profit is definitely there. Okay. It's a draw for a lot of people. The article specifically talks about first edition cards. Okay. Especially from those early sets. Yeah. You know, the ones with the black star. Oh, yeah, yeah. That basically screams, I'm old school. Ooh. Okay, so those Black Star cards are the ones to watch out for. I'm guessing a first edition Charizard with that Black Star is probably worth a mint. You're catching on quick. Okay. The article also points out that rare holographic cards tend to command top dollar. Okay. Especially those featuring iconic Pokemon like yeah. Charizard, Pikachu, or Mewtwo. Right, the classic. And then you have the limited edition promos. Oh, okay. Which are always highly sought after because, yeah. well, there just aren't that many of them. Right, right, limited supply, high demand. Exactly. Okay, so rarity and limited availability are key. Uh-huh. But I have to ask, is it really as simple as finding any old Charizard card and cashing in? Uh-huh. Is it really that easy? Hold your ponyita there. Okay. It's not quite that simple. Don't. The market is kind of like this living, breathing beast. Oh, wow. It's constantly changing, oh, influenced wow. by trends and demand. Right. And while some people have definitely struck gold, yeah. <laughs> there are no guarantees. Okay. The article really emphasizes that research is paramount, especially if you're even considering this as an investment. So it's not just about blindly buying cards and hoping for the best. No, no. You need to know what you're doing. Right. Think of it like buying stocks. Okay. You really need to understand the market trends, uh -huh. different factors that affect value, okay. and of course, the risks involved. Right, right. You can't just jump in blindly. Makes sense. And speaking of things that affect value, the article mentions grading. Oh, yeah. It's like the condition of the card is a big deal, right? Absolutely. It's huge. Okay. Just like with vintage comic books, condition is everything Yeah. in the Pokemon card world. Right. The article explains that there are these professional grading services okay. like PSA and Beckett. Okay. These companies carefully evaluate cards based on their condition. So they're like looking at every little detail to determine how good the condition is. Yeah. Focusing on things like the centering, okay. sharp corners, edges, and even tiny surface imperfections. Wow, they're like the Sherlock Holmes of card collecting. They really are. Looking for every little detail. Exactly. And those grades, especially the coveted PSA 10, oh, yeah. can make a huge E difference in a card's value. Wow. A PSA 10 means the card is essentially flawless. Oh, wow. Like a pristine of... example of that particular card. So if you're thinking about getting serious about collecting, Sleeves and cases are a must. Absolutely. Protect those babies like they're made of gold. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And getting your cards graded, while it does cost money, yeah. it can significantly increase their value. You're okay. Especially if they get a high grade. Uh, it's like this official seal of approval right. that really reassures potential buyers. Okay. So we've got nostalgia. Right. We've got amazing artwork. Yeah. We've got investment potential. Uh-huh. And now 
this whole world of grading. Yes. But what about the simple joy of collecting? Oh, yeah. You know, the thrill of completing a set. Yeah. I'm imagining that satisfying feeling of having every card from the base set. Yeah. All neatly organized in a binder. Oh, for sure. Talk about a collector's dream. Absolutely. The article points out that completing sets gives collectors structure and goals. Right. Some sets are just iconic in the Pokemon world, yeah. like the base set that you mentioned. Yeah. Or the Shining Legends set. Oh, cool. These sets are highly sought after for their rarity, mm -hmm. historical significance, right. or even just the amazing Pokemon featured in them. Yeah. You know? It's like owning a piece of Pokemon history. It is. And speaking of history, I bet there's a whole community of collectors out there. Oh, yeah. Who are just as passionate about these cards as we are. You bet. Conventions, meetups, online forums. Wow. A whole world of Pokemon enthusiasts. That's so cool. And it's not just about trading and selling cards. Right. It's about sharing your passion. Yeah. Getting advice from seasoned collectors uh -huh. and even learning how to spot fake cards. Oh, that's important. Very important. Yes, yeah, so it's like having this built-in network of support and expertise. Exactly. Which is super helpful, especially for someone who's just starting out. Absolutely. But here's a question for our listener. What if you actually want to play the trading card game? Oh, but it's not... with your cards. Yeah. I bet that adds a whole other dimension to collecting. You hit the nail on the head. The trading card game, or TCG as it's known, okay. brings another layer of fun and strategy to the whole hobby. Right. And certain cards, yeah. because of their unique abilities or power in the game, uh -huh. become highly sought after by players, okay. even if they aren't necessarily the rarest cards. Interesting. Yeah, the... So you might have a card that's worth a decent amount to a collector. Right. But it's considered a total game changer for competitive players. Exactly. That's so cool. It's like the cards have a double life. They do. Collectible treasures. Uh-huh. And tools of strategic battle. Exactly. It's like having a piece of art that you can use to duel your friends. Love it. But with all this talk about value. Yeah. And potential profit. Uh -huh. I'm curious. How sustainable is this hobby in the long run? Mm. Is it just a fad? Right. Or is there something more enduring about Pokemon cards? That's where things get really interesting. Think about it. Okay. Pokemon has been a global phenomenon for over 25 years. It has. And it shows no signs of slowing down. So it's not just us nostalgic millennials who are keeping this hobby alive. No, not at all. There's a whole new generation of fans discovering the world of Pokemon. Precisely. And the Pokemon company is smart. Yeah. They keep things fresh with new sets, expansions, yeah. and even collaborations, right. ensuring there's always something new to collect. So they're keeping people engaged. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a testament to the enduring appeal of the franchise. So it sounds like there's a good chance these cards will continue to hold their value. Potentially, yeah. Even as the hobby evolves. Possibly. But I bet there are some things to consider before diving headfirst into this world, right? Oh, absolutely. And one of the most important things the article emphasizes is setting a realistic budget. Okay, yeah. Don't overspend trying to chase those elusive rare cards right off the bat. Right. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Because that fear of missing out can really get you in trouble. Exactly. And yeah. then there's the whole storage aspect. Okay. Protecting your cards is essential to maintaining their condition and value. Right. Sleeves, binders, acid-free storage boxes. Yeah. All those things are important. It's like creating a safe haven for your Pokemon treasures. You got it. Yeah. And don't forget about research. Yeah. Especially if you're thinking about the investment angle. Okay. You need to understand market trends, right. rarity, yeah. and all those factors that determine a card's value. All right. We've covered a ton of ground in this first part of our deep dive. We have. We've talked about the emotional connection, yeah. the well, artwork, yeah. the investment potential what? grading. Yes. And even the community aspect. It's a lot. But before we move on, okay, I want to make sure our listener understands this. Okay. Pokemon card collecting isn't just about one thing. Right. It's this multifaceted hobby with something to offer everyone. I couldn't agree more. It's about finding your own path. Right. Within this vast and exciting world. Yeah. Are you in it for the love of Pokemon? Yeah. The thrill of the hunt? Uh -huh. The financial aspect? Okay. Or maybe a combination of all three? That's such a great point. Yeah. Figuring out your goals will guide your decisions. Absolutely. And make the whole experience that much more rewarding. It really will. But for now, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. We come back, 
we'll get even more practical. Awesome. We'll dive deeper into how to spot those valuable cards. Yes. Where to find them. Uh-huh. And the best strategies for building a collection that reflects your unique goals. Sound good. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our Pokemon card deep dive. In part one, we explored the reasons behind this hobby's popularity. Oh. Okay. From pure nostalgia yeah. to the potential for turning cardboard into cash. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. How can our listeners spot a valuable card? Okay. What are those little details that make a collector's heart skip a beat? Well, first things first. Okay. Keep an eye out for that black star. Right. Remember those first edition cards from the early sets? Yeah. Those are highly sought after, and that black star yeah. is like a badge of honor. Okay. Black star equals potential treasure. Got it. But what about holographic cards? Right. I know those are super popular, but are all hollows created equal? Not exactly. But Some hollows are more common than others. The ones that get collectors really excited are the rare hollows, especially those with unique finishes. Okay. The article specifically mentions shadowless hollows. Shadowless. Yeah. Okay, I'm intrigued. What makes them so special? Well, they're called shadowless because they lack the drop shadow that wow. you usually see around the illustration box oh. on regular holographic cards. Okay. It's a subtle difference, yeah. but it makes them instantly recognizable to collectors. Right. And, of course, more valuable. So it's like a little printing quirk. <laughs> yeah, it is. That turned into a collector's gold mine. <laughs> I love those little historical details. Uh, sure, sure. That add to a card's value. Uh-huh. It's not just about the Pokemon itself. Right. It's about the card's unique story. Exactly. But I'm sure condition plays a huge role too, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. A pristine first edition Charizard is probably worth a lot more. Huge. Than one that looks like it went through a lawnmower. You nailed it. Condition is paramount. Okay. Even minor imperfections, yeah. like scratches, Actually. creases, or faded colors, right. can significantly impact a card's value. Wow. That's why those PSA 10 graded cards are like the holy grail. Right. They're basically flawless specimens. It's yeah. Frozen in time. So if you're lucky enough to find a card in mint condition, right. you better treat it like a museum artifact. Uh-huh. Exactly. Sleeves, top loaders, maybe even build a climate-controlled vault. For sure. But let's be real. Finding those rare, valuable cards in the wild yeah. is probably about as likely as catching a shiny Pokemon in the games. It's tough. It happens, but it's rare. But... So where do most collectors actually find these treasures? Well, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Stumbling upon a gem in a random booster pack yeah. is a pretty lucky event. Right. But there are more strategic approaches. Okay. Local card shops are a great place to start. Okay. They often have knowledgeable staff yeah. who can help you identify valuable cards. Okay. And they might even have some hidden treasures oh, cool. tucked away in their collection. It's like going on a treasure hunt. You never know what you might uncover in those display cases. What it, about online marketplaces? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I bet there's a whole digital world of Pokemon card trading going on. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Online platforms like eBay, Troll and Toad, uh -huh. and even dedicated Pokemon card marketplaces yeah, offer yeah. a vast selection of cards from all eras. Okay. It's super convenient for browsing and comparing prices. So it's like having a global card shop at your fingertips. Yeah. But I'm guessing there are some things to watch out for when buying online. Yeah, you're smart to be cautious. Okay. It's essential to buy from reputable sellers right. and learn how to spot the telltale signs of counterfeit cards. Okay, like why? Things like off-center printing, oh, okay. misspellings, or even low-quality card stock can right. be red flags. It's like those Team Rocket schemes in the show. Uh-huh, exactly. Got to be vigilant. But, hey, right. on a more positive note, the Pokemon community seems like a fantastic resource yeah. for both new and seasoned collectors. 100%. Yeah. Experienced collectors are often willing to share their knowledge, okay. offer advice, and help you avoid those shady deals. Cool. So it's like having a network of mentors right. who are passionate about keeping the hobby fun and fair. Exactly. Okay, so we've got local card shops, right. online marketplaces, yeah. and this amazing community of support. Yeah. But with so many different sets, yeah, expansions, yeah. Uh, and card types out there, uh, it can be overwhelming to even know where to begin building a collection. Yeah. Any advice for our listener who's feeling a little lost in the tall grass? One approach is to focus on a specific set or generation that speaks to you. Huh? Maybe it's the base set that sparked your childhood love for Pokemon. Yeah. 
or a newer set with artwork that just blows you away. Right. Having a clear focus makes collecting more manageable. Okay. And honestly, more enjoyable. It's like choosing your starter Pokemon. It is. You pick the one that vibes with you and build your team. Right. Or in this case, your collection. From there. Exactly. But what about those super rare, super expensive cards? Oh. You know, the ones that make headlines. Mm. Or selling at auctions for tens of thousands of dollars. Mm. Are those even attainable for the average collector? Those ultra rare cards like the new rarity Venusaur oh. or the Gold Star Espeon. Cool. Those are definitely the stuff of legends. Right. They're often out of reach for most collectors. Yeah. Both in terms of availability. Right. And, uh, well, the price tag. So it's like the ultimate Pokemon challenge, the Mount Everest of card collecting. But hey. It is. Even if you're not dropping thousands on a single card, right. there's still a lot of fun to be had, right? Exactly. Yeah. There are tons of amazing cards to discover and enjoy, yeah. even if they're not going to buy you a house. Right. Remember, the joy of collecting is about the journey, the yeah. thrill of the hunt, yeah. the excitement of finding a hidden gem, yeah. and the satisfaction of building a collection that reflects your unique passion. It's about connecting with that inner child yes. who fell in love with Pokemon in the first place. Exactly. But let's not forget that collecting can also be an investment. Right. Any tips for those who are approaching this with a more financial mindset? Absolutely. The key is to treat it like any other investment. Okay. Do your research, mm -hmm. understand the market trends, right. and be prepared for fluctuations. Okay. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. Got it. It's about long-term strategy and, of course, a bit of luck. So it's not just about blindly buying cards and hoping for the best. No. It's about knowing what you're doing. Right. Being patient mm -hmm. and making smart choices. Exactly. And remember to always protect your investment, right. proper storage, authentication. Right. And even insurance can go a long way yeah. in preserving the value of your collection. It's like building a financial fortress for your Pokemon treasures. You got it. We've covered a lot of ground in this second part. We have. Identifying valuable cards, uh -huh. exploring different marketplaces, right, and right. even touching on the investment side of collecting. Mm -hmm. But before we wrap up this part, any other nuggets of wisdom you want to share with our listener? One thing I'd emphasize is that Pokemon card collecting yeah. is a constantly evolving hobby. Okay. New sets are released all the time, right. trends shift, uh -huh. and the community is always buzzing with new discoveries. So it's not a static hobby. Yeah. It's this living, breathing world that keeps on growing and surprising us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The key is to stay engaged, right. keep learning, uh -huh. and never stop exploring the vast and exciting world of Pokemon cards. Sounds like a pretty amazing adventure. <laughs> all right, folks, that wraps up part two of our deep dive. Mm -hmm. We've given you the tools to identify valuable cards, right. navigate the marketplace, yep. and even start thinking about this hobby from an investment perspective. Uh huh. But the journey's not over yet. In part three, we'll explore the ethical side of collecting. Oh, yeah. The importance of community. Yes. And some final tips to make your Pokemon card adventure truly rewarding. Stay tuned. Welcome back for the final part of our Pokemon card journey. We've talked about the nostalgia, the value, the thrill of the hunt. Right. But now let's get a little real world here. Yeah, it's fascinating how this hobby has a whole ethical side to it. Oh, okay. Something the article touches on that we should definitely unpack. Okay, ethical collecting. Yeah. What does that even mean in the world of Pokemon cards? Well, think about it. With rare cards potentially worth so much, Yeah. there's this temptation for yeah. some people to, shall we say, bend the rules a little? Like trying to trick people into paying more than a card is actually worth? Exactly. The article mentions price gouging, okay, which is a real problem, especially yeah. when a new set drops yeah. or a rare card suddenly becomes super popular. Right. Some sellers try to exploit the hype yeah. and jack up prices to like unreasonable levels. It's like those scalpers who buy up all the concert tickets. All right. And then resell them for a fortune. Totally. Not cool. No. So how do we, as collectors, yeah. make sure we're not playing into that? It all comes back to knowledge. Okay. And being informed, right. do your research, compare prices from different sellers, uh -huh. and don't be afraid to walk away from a deal right. if it feels shady. Right. Or just plain unfair. Yeah, yeah. Remember, there are plenty of honest sellers out there. Okay, that's good. Who are 
passionate about the hobby uh, and want to see it thrive in a positive way. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in the excitement, yeah. especially when you see a card you've been wanting forever. For sure. But sometimes stepping back and thinking rationally right. is the best move. Couldn't agree more. It's like that old saying, if it seems too good to be true, yeah, it probably is. Exactly. And remember, the Poking On community is a fantastic resource. Oh, right. Yeah. Don't hesitate to connect with experienced collectors, yeah. ask questions, get their insights on pricing and fair dealing. Speaking of the community, it seems like it's so much more than just buying and selling cards. It is. What's the real heart of it? For me, the community is one of the most rewarding aspects of this hobby. Okay. It's about connecting with like-minded people. Right. Sharing your passion for Pokemon and mm. learning from each other's experiences. It's like a giant Pokemon league. Haha, uh -huh. yeah. But instead of battling with our Pokemon, right. we're trading cards. Yep. Sharing stories. Uh -huh. And geeking out over our favorite finds. Exactly. And there's this real sense of mentorship within the community. Oh, cool. You know? Yeah. Experienced collectors often take newer collectors under their wing. That's awesome. Offer advice, share tips. Yeah. And help them navigate this sometimes complex world of yeah. Pokemon cards. It's like passing the torch to the next generation of collectors. It is. Ensuring that the love for this hobby continues to grow. Beautifully said. It's a reminder that collecting yeah. isn't just about the cards themselves. Yeah. It's about the human connections we make along the way. All right. Before we send our listener off on their Pokemon card adventure, okay. any final words of wisdom to equip them for the journey? Remember, this hobby has so many facets. Okay. It can be a trip down memory lane, yeah. a way to appreciate art, uh -huh. a strategic game. Okay a potential investment, right? and most importantly, a doorway to an amazing community. Yeah, it really is. Find what you love about it, set your goals, yeah. and enjoy the ride. Great advice. And above all, yeah. <laughs> remember that collecting should be fun. Absolutely. If it starts to feel like a chore or a source of stress, yeah. take a step back uh -huh. and reconnect with that joy and passion yes. that drew you to Pokemon in the first place. And who knows, maybe one day, years from now, You'll be the seasoned collector. Wow. Sharing your knowledge and love of Pokemon. Yeah. With a whole new generation of enthusiasts. That's a fantastic thought. All right, folks. That brings us to the end of our deep dive into the wonderful world of Pokemon cards. We've covered a ton of ground. We have. From the history and value of cards mm -hmm. to the ethics of collecting. Right. And the power of the community. It's been a journey. It has. Go forth, explore, connect. Yeah. And may your collections be ever growing and ever inspiring. And until next time, keep on catching them all.